a base surrender of truth. This is a famous saying by father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi. Today, on his birthday, we are here with a tale of promise. Each day, I will do my best and I won't do any less. My work will always please me and I won't accept a mess. I won't forget my promise to always do my best. Promise is a very strong emotion. It is easy to make a promise but hard to keep them. Indeed, you promise me, I promise you. What we say is what we do. Good morning everyone. I am Kashvi. And I am Rajveer. A hearty welcome to all. We are honored to have you all here. It is a special day where you will witness a spectacular tale of keeping promises. We are glad to present our annual day, the Pied Piper, a saga of promise and trust. Thank you, my friend, for introducing the theme for the day. As Analytes, we feel immensely proud to promise ourselves to live up to our school motto, big hearts and brave minds. May West has rightly said that an ounce of performance is worth pounds of promises. A promise made is a debt unpaid. This <coughs> annual day, we are here with our presentation on a tale which is known for stressing the relevance of keeping one's words. There were many known stories that highlights promise as a virtue. But this one will surely take you on an emotional tide. Our school emphasizes on being kind, caring and helpful. It teaches us about working together. In this tale, you will witness the importance of unity and strength. So, let us reflect on the small things that we can do to bring about a change in the lives of everyone. We feel honored to have among us our esteemed guests whose presence has made this day special. Our chief guest for the day is Dr. Father Josie P. George. It's our pleasure to have you, Father. We feel privileged to have your blessings today. We would like to welcome our own dear Reverend Father J. A. Carvalho, Director of Father Agnel School at Vishali, Delhi and Noida. Father always elevates our spirits and minds to aim high and make our dreams a reality. He is a guiding light for us. We welcome Father Roy, Principal of Father Agnel School Delhi, who is an exemplary as a leader of esteemed institution. We welcome Father Robinson, Director, Niscot Media College, who is here with us today. Our respected principal, Sister Navya, who has been striving to imbibe the attributes of love, compassion and discipline in us. Sister, we are fortunate to have you as our principal. On behalf of Father Agnel School Vashali, I welcome all the coordinators and teachers of Father Agnel Schools 
from Delhi, Noida, Great Noida and Jan Kalyan Kendra Khoda. Dear parents, you are a very important part of our Agnal family and it's always a great pleasure to have the entire family come together and celebrate events like these. We value your presence and thank you for taking out your precious time for us. Your presence here is a true sign of love for our school, our extended home. We proudly welcome you all here. Light is a symbol of growth, knowledge and courage to give away the darkness. It guides us to our goal. A lamp does not speak, but it introduces itself through its light. So, it is better to light a candle than curse the dark. I would now like to request our chief guest, Dr. Father Josie P. George, our director, Father Carvalho, Father Roy, our principal, Sister Navya, our coordinator, Ma'am Rashmi, our junior school head boy, Praline, head girl, Lovni, vice head boy, Rachit, and Vice Head Girl Charvi to kindly come forward and light the lamp. everyone a day without prayer is a day without blessing and a life without prayer is a life without power the power of prayer is the power of God it paves the way to come together in God's perfect timings. Now, I request Sister Navya to lead us into prayer. May I request you all to rise for the prayer. <coughs> God, our loving Father, we thank you for this day. You said, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice. Lord, we rejoice with you for our beloved students, for the gift of their life, and everything that they are to us, to our family, to our school, and to the humanity. Lord, you speak to us through their life. You inspire us to live a sublime life, setting example for them to live a safe life, a trustworthy life. Lord, you have entrusted our students into our hands so that we be really true light to them, to walk in the right path, to live a life sublime, to live a life and bring glory to you. 
you have endowed them with numerous gifts and talents, skills and abilities that they may bring glory, make us realize how you love them, protect them. Help us, Lord, to be truthful people. Guide us in all our endeavors so that we may bring more joy to our lives by living a life which is worthy of you. But especially we pray for our students who are performing today. Bless them, Lord. Bless all their efforts, the hard work they have put in to make this day a memorable one. Bless us and guide us. We make this prayer to you, Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Dance is meditation in movement, a walking into silence where every movement becomes a prayer. Yes, my friend, I see dance being used as communication between body and soul to express what is too deep to find words. And when we dance to pray, the magic begins, the magic that invokes belief, peace, and trust. To put this thought to life, we are here with a special prayer dance to seek the blessings of Almighty God.
The school is committed to provide its students the best education. This includes not only academic learning, but also the learning to interact with successful professionals in various fields. It is my pleasure to introduce our chief guest for the day, Dr. Father Josie P. George, who has graciously accepted our invitation to join us today. Father is currently serving as Director and Dean of Christ, deemed to be University, Delhi NCR campus. He is a member of the religious congregation called Carmelites of Mary Immaculate. He has a dual master's degree in computer science and human resource from USA and has done his FDPM from IIM, Ahmedabad. He has been awarded a doctorate in computer science by Christ University, Bengaluru. His research activities focus on algorithms for improved accuracy in biometrics. Also, he has completed a major research on technology in higher education. He has published many research papers, both in national and international journals. In addition to these achievements, he has also authored two motivational books on management titled Booster Ability to Make Great Decisions and Leadership Par Excellence. He has also co-authored a book titled Data Ethics and Challenges, published in Springer. He has been awarded the Visionary Leader of 2019 Award for his outstanding and exemplary contribution towards education, skill development, and research. He has successfully filled four patent applications along with copyrights. We feel honored to have a leader like him as our chief guest. With that, I invite Father to come forward and address our esteemed gathering. His words of wisdom will motivate students. Let's give a round of applause to welcome Father. Good morning, dear fathers, Sister Navya, the principal, all the faculty members, and my dear parents. <laughs> By hearing the introduction, I feel that I am at my funeral. <laughs> People are <laughs> talking something, I, the first time I hear it like this. When Sister told me to come to this campus, to the school, for this uh, annual day function, I was so happy to be here. I thought so, I am going to address the, the school children, so I was just reflecting what should I talk to the pa pa children. But when I came here, when I see the parents, I thought I should talk something differently. Last 23 years, I am working with the Christ University. I am dealing with the same age group of the students from 17 to 25, the age of the students. I always feel wonder or think Every year, the life of the children, the attitude of children keep on changing. I was wondering why it happened so. Many times we come across a lot of the issues, the problems that we face with the children. Nowadays, the, the youth, maybe people know because your parents, you also raising maybe the 17 to 24 years, the children maybe. Just one example, so last, uh, last time so one of the parents coming and told me, Father, um, my child, I don't understand why he's doing so. I asked, what happened? I asked him, he, he's going somewhere. Then I asked him, where are you going? He said, nowhere. I don't know which is the place, nowhere. The children, the youth now know the place, nowhere, by seeing all the English movies. And when will you come back? I don't know. Who, with whom you are going? I won't say. This is the type of the youth that people are the, growing up. He's going nowhere. 
and he don't know with whom he's going and he don't know when he's going to come even after saying all these things the, the boy will ask papa can you give me 100 rupees he is going nowhere he don't know when he will come back he don't know with whom he is going and he needs 100 rupees still the poor parents finance him to go the place called nowhere this is the type of the children and and the one of the other one boy is coming to me and told but i am so much worried i am so, so sad to be at my home what happened my papa likes some other type of the kids and my mum is liking some different types of kids you know i don't know which type of kids they are liking they like all the children other than me this is the, the the situation most of the time my dear friends i always think so we all hear the eq we know what is eq and we hear this iq but i feel more than eq and iq you the parents should have to understand the tq the talent quotient there is one place called the the nandi 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 tribe nandi tribes that's a place almost 80 in kenya 80000 the gold medals they receive for the olympics 80000 the lot of discussions are going on it may be that saying this some psychological maybe the difference so with the geographical location advantage is there and the physiological advantage is there but it is not because the location advantage is not the physiological advantage nothing else it is because the tq we each and every parent sitting here you should understand you find out tq the talent quotient the talent quotient exists everywhere the first thing we have to identify the talent quotient you have to understand about your child what is the talent quotient of your child once you understand then you get to capitalize those talent it is not about the the, the height or the weight which make a difference but the way how you entertain the your, your ch children the way you how you are going to deal with the child many times most of the issue when they come to the college the, the with the youth the main reason when i find to can be the parents dear friends we are here we have to understand our responsibilities what should we do how we have to go, make him make them understand the child most of the time the parents maybe the the elderly parents you will come to know many times maybe sir, we always afraid the, the teacher in the school we afraid the parents because we know that when we do something wrong in the school and see there someone to ask the question nowadays if they do something they always the parents support them most of the time most of the time when some issue happen in the college there so many people to come and support them the politicians so many calls will come then attendance shortage around 20% attendance last time the so many calls so many calls by so many the politicians when some good things happen nobody there to support we have to work around all the people when some the wrong things to support so many people are there that is the situation we all deal so we have to understand this tq then we have to support them that's the way we have to make them grow make them understand there's some dogs are walking one of the place they saw one rabbit on the lawn the dogs decided so we'll go and chase and catch the rabbit one of the dogs told okay i will catch the rabbit then the dog started chasing the rabbit the rabbit is running the dog also just behind the rabbit they keep on running after some time the dog and rabbit keep on running after some time the rabbit escaped the dog tired came back to the other dogs the other dogs told what a shame on you even he couldn't catch a rabbit the dog told yes i couldn't catch the dog told the rabbit was running for its life i was running for its fun the rabbit was running for its life and i was running for the fun the desire and the level of the desire will decide our destiny my dear parents the desire and the level of the desire will decide our destiny we have to run fast now most of the times what is happening is most of the schools and colleges and most of the places we have the gradual growth so good i not saying so bad but what we need not like the gradual growth the quick growth we are think the the world is so fast now most of the time when with the curve growth like this don't think that we we are stay on the same the curve 
Sometimes we have to go there, then we have to start some other care from there. Not one care, different cares we have to keep on drawing now. That's the way we have to understand, we have to train our the kids. Most of the times what is happening when, when our kids, are, when we go to some of the places, we make that place like a hell. When our children go to some places, the other children also get spoiled. Always you say that, okay, please find the good friends and be with them. Whether when we go to some places, when our children go to some places, can we make the place like a heaven? Can we make that place like a happy the place, happy home? That's what we should think. There's one child, one, one girl who was about to marry. Then um, one day the girl came to her mother and told, Mom, I won't marry that person. The mother asked, what happened? Last many years you were with him. And he told, I will only marry that person. And now he coming and telling, I won't marry. What's happened? The girl told, Mom, he don't believe the hell or heaven. He don't have the faith. He is saying that we can do anything what you want. Only we should be careful. That's all. I won't marry a person who don't have the faith. I don't marry a person who is saying there is no hell and heaven. I cannot marry. After a small pause, the mother told, My dear, if he don't like or he don't believe on the, faith, the heaven and hell, he don't worry, you should marry him. Mama, what are you telling? The mother again once again told, if he, don't, if he don't believe that there is no hell or heaven, he don't worry, you should marry him. Because, because after a marriage, within 10 days, he will understand there is a hell. Once a person believes that there is a hell, automatically the person believes there is a heaven also. This is, most of, this is the situation. When we go to some places, within short time, we make that place like a hell. When we get married to a place, place, that home, that a very happy place, within a short moment, we will make it like a hell. Just reflect how we are. How your home, your place. If your place, your home is a happy place, automatically the children that will grow in that way. It is our responsibility. Suppose your child is not obeying, the child is going to the place like nowhere, he don't know with whom he is going, the problem lies each one of you. We have to reflect what type of values we are going to give to the child. What type of values they are going to study from us. More than the words they are going to observe. They have to understand how we communicate, the husband and wife, how they are communicating, how they are taking the children, how they are teaching them, the, what you show, what in the home. That's what makes a difference. Dear friends, by saying this, um, I wish you all the best. And a special thanks to the Sister Navya, the fathers and all the faculty members for making this, this event as a wonderful event. After a long time, I am attending a school program. I really like the way they communicate. The, right from the beginning, when I came to the in front side, the vehicle, the way they received, the children, how they respect, the, how they greet, I really appreciate. Thank you so much. Because you know, sir, you know, you know difficulty to growing up, to nurturing one child or two child at home. But you can understand difficulties these teachers. And you see your child when? Maybe after 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. How much time? How much hour you see your child? Maybe 5 to, maybe it's, uh, till 8 o'clock. By 8 o'clock, they'll sleep. Am I right? And from this 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock, you know how difficult it is to deal with them. The thing about these teachers and the sisters, from morning to evening, to deal with them, to make them understand, to train them. That's what we are giving a big round of applause to all the teachers. Once again, thank you so much. Thank you, Father, for your inspiring words. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for the most awaited part of today's program. Let's gear up and witness a tale of promise and trust. I know you all are waiting for the show to begin. It's show time! We would now 
take you to a town called Hamelin. It's a place in Germany. Germany? Wow! The legend dates back to the Middle Ages. The earliest known version of the story originates from the town of Hamelin itself, from a church in 1300s. 1300s? And this is 2000s. The story is from old days. Is it real? Although that church was destroyed in 1600s, several versions of the story still survive. Real or not, but its inscriptions are found in records depicting its various versions. Oh, this is now making me think deeper. Can you please elaborate further? Pipe Piper was a rat catcher hired by the townspeople to take rats away with his magic pipe. Magic pipe? Rats and a rat catcher? How fascinating it is to imagine all this together. Yes, indeed. The students of Father Agnal Vashali proudly present to you the Pied Piper, a, a saga of promise and trust. A musical play in English which revolves around the people and their problems living in Hamlin. This is giving me goosebumps already. Let's gear up for the musical fiesta. Lights, camera, action. Let the show begin. Welcome to Hamelin, a quiet little town that looked perfect. It had quaint little houses, winding cobbled streets and beautiful parks. It was surrounded by rolling hills to the north and flower-filled meadows to the south. There were tall, shady woods to the west and a rushing river to the east. The people of Hamelin were a happy lot. They kept themselves busy in all sorts of interesting occasions like grinding, milling, baking, weaving and farming. Good morning, Mrs. Martha. It's a lovely day. Would you like some freshly baked buns with hot coffee? Hey Gary, good morning. Can you please help me to lift the sack of wheat? Surely. But lately, Hamelin was not as perfect as it seemed. Hamelin had developed a problem. A horrible, terrible secret. Rats! They were everywhere. They ran around the streets, in the shops and cafes, the parks and playgrounds. They lived in the fields and the barns. They squeaked loudly throughout the day and night. The people of Hamelin weren't safe in their own homes. In every single corner of the town, there were rats, rats and more rats. The people of Hamelin tried everything they could to get rid of the rats. But there was nothing that could drive them from that direction. away.
down our street. We had them everywhere. Poor old Mrs. Jones found two asleep under her pillow. Ah, uh, Jimmy reckons he saw one swimming in his custard at school this morning. What was it doing? The breaststroke? It's no laughing matter. I think it's really serious. And it's about time that somebody did something about it. They're absolutely everywhere. What about the mayor? We pay our rates. What is he doing about it? That's what I want to know. Look, here he comes. He gets paid enough. Surely he can find a solution. I know how you all feel, but I just don't know what to do anymore. I am at my wits end. The rat catchers had a nervous breakdown. The cats have either run away or are so fat with eating rats, they are about to burst. Fat cats eating rats? Fat cats eating rats? Oh, could you imagine a load of fat cats exploding all over the place? Yeah, I think that's what you call ratatouille. The rat poison hasn't worked. The town hall is swarming with them. I even caught some nibbling my ropes in the mayor's parlor this morning. I have tried everything I know to get rid of these rats. I don't know what else to do. Nobody's got the answer to our problem. These rats are going to be the death of us all. But surely you can do something. Surely he can do something. Why don't you do something? Do something! Do something! Do something! Do something. Stop! Will you? I am done with your rants. about the rats? Hundreds of them! Thousands and millions of them! Everywhere! In our houses, in our shops! 
in our school, running down the street. We can't stand them anymore. Well, I am the Pied Piper. Believe it or not, I'm just the man you need. I have the answer to all your problems. Rats are my speciality. I'll get rid of them for you. But what do you know about rats? Hi, you? How can somebody as strange looking as you get rid of all these rats when we tried everything we know? What are you going to do? Huh? Make them die laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Look you here, did you ever see anybody looking as funny as me? Long skinny legs and a very tall eye, but what you didn't know is I'm the person that with my little pipe and its magic be fly. Can with your tongue of the pig We are very poor, you know. The rats have eaten all our food. There is very little left in the treasury. A hundred silver pieces is all that I ask. That is not very much for such a task. It's too much. We can't afford that. What are we going to do? I hmm. bet he can't do it. Oh. We would have to increase the taxes again. So what? I'd even pay double tax if it meant we had that free accommodation. What have we got to lose? Why don't we let him show us what he can do? I'll believe it only when I see it. Let's hear this wonderful magic music then. I don't care which sort of music it is. As long as he gets rid of these blooming rats. Well, we don't really believe you. But go ahead and prove us wrong if you can. I will pay you your hundred silver pieces. All right then. Look, there's half a dozen coming out from the baker's shop and the butchers, the grocers. There they go. One, two, three. Dozen of them. Hundreds of them. Thousands of them. Look at them go. Yay! We never thought. 
thought he could do it. They have gone. The rats have gone. from 
but now, sir? Certainly. The townspeople should be thankful to me for the rest of their lives. I have done what you have asked me. The rats have gone away. So kindly, will you give me what you promised you would pay? <coughs> you see, it's like this. <coughs> well, I didn't actually think you would get rid of the rats. And besides, it was so easy. <laughs> Surely. We don't have to pay a hundred silver pieces for just a few minutes work. At that rate, you would be earning two thousand silver pieces an hour. Why? That's nearly as much as a mayor solicitor. If I'd known it was that easy, I would have done it myself. I think I've got a pipe somewhere in my attic. <laughs> But you gave me your word. Well, yes, I did. A but promise is a... Couldn't we come to some arrangement? You know, pay you installments? Definitely. Uh, sort of. Nothing to pay until the next two months. A promise, young man, is a promise. I'll have to ask the people. They can decide. After all, it will mean an increase in taxes for them. I took you for a man of your word. You promised in front of all these witnesses to pay me hundred silver pieces. If you don't keep your word, 
you will regret it. My magic pipe works on lots of other things besides rats, you know. What are you saying? Are you threatening me? Well, yes, I suppose I am. Ha! Did you hear that? The Pied Piper is threatening me. <laughs> Maybe he's going to mesmerize all of us with that pipe of his too. Or wave like a magic wand and make us all disappear. Abra, Kadabra, whoosh, we're all gone. Goodbye, rats. Goodbye, people. <laughs> what a laugh. Does he think we are that stupid? Yes, but that pipe of his has got something special in it. It did have an awesome effect on the rats, didn't it? Yeah, I think we should be careful. In my opinion, which I rate very highly, I think we should tell the piper to go elsewhere and play his pipe. Who knows what the other downs would like something driven out. But as far as Hamlin is concerned, I'm afraid you must be on your way. Yeah, be on your way. We have got plenty of other things to spend our money on. Our children need a new school. We need a new library. The town hall needs a new roof. Our Jimmy needs new shoes. I always thought he was a bit daft. Fancy walking around dressed like that. chance to change your mind. On your way! On your way! I hope you realize the seriousness of your actions. I'm afraid I'm going to have to teach you all a lesson. You will all wish you had kept your word.
trance. I couldn't move either. I was just fixed to the spot. Now, what are we going to do? All our children have disappeared. Where has he taken them? Please bring them back. should have paid us straight away. The Pied Piper did what he said he would do. We should have done the same. If I had known what was going to happen, I would willingly had paid more tax. There are some things money can't buy. Everywhere seems so empty and quiet. I know I used to get really mad with our Rachel sometimes. I'd often wish her a hundred miles away. Now that this has happened, I would give anything to have a little Rachel back. But how do you know it was wonderful if you didn't get inside the mountain? It was the music. The music explained it all. I do so wish I was there now. But it all seems like a dream now.
what have we done? Oh, what have we done? We have lost our children and it was all our own fault. Why didn't we pay him? How could we have been so foolish? We should never have said we would pay him and then break our word. The mayor should have paid him up straight away. The Pied Piper did what he said he would do. We should have done the same. Wherever you are, hear our plea, whether near or far, we call upon thee. We have realized our selfishness and greed, and we are here to give what you need. Come back, Piper, come back, return our children, let our happiness come back. Well, I can see that you are yearning to meet your children. Piper, we are sorry for how we treated you. We were selfish and greedy. Here, here is what we owe you. Take it all and give us back what belongs to us. Well then, you shall have what you need.
<laughs> this day shall be remembered in Hamelin forever. Let us celebrate. Let us now celebrate the legend of the Pied Piper along with the people of Hamelin. It was indeed a time to celebrate in Hamelin for the people were not just free from rats but also had their children back. The people of Hamelin were smiling again. However, the Pied Piper had taught them an important lesson which was to be honest and grateful to others and always keep their promise. After all, honoring an agreement is critical as it promotes mutual trust. The legend of the Pied Piper has a powerful social message for each one of us. Our society works on trust and belief in one another. Therefore, it is important to be thoughtful before we give our word to someone. We must also acknowledge and be grateful to others who help us and be true to our word. Let's take a pledge to practice the magical qualities of gratitude and honesty in our lives at all times and become responsible citizens of our society. Let us now celebrate the legend of the Pied Piper along with the people of Hamelin. shake the world. You don't need to move mountains to change the world. But a small act of kindness has the ability to go a long way. We Agnolites have learned this from the examples set by someone who has left everlasting footprints on our hearts through his simplicity, warmth and benevolence. He is none other than our very own Father Carvalho. We thank Father for his vision and contribution as one of the leaders of the Agnel family. I would request Father to address the gathering. Morning, everyone. First things first, give them a standing ovation for the wonderful way they performed. All of you, they deserve that. <laughs> Loud applause for all the children. Thank you, parents. Reverend Dr. Jossi George, our chief guest today. Sister Nabia, Father Roy, the principal of Delhi School. Teachers, parents, my very dear students, credit must go to those who deserve it. Sister Navia for her leadership of the school. Very special and supervisor of the junior school, Ma'am Rashmi, please stand up. Where are you? 
and the team of the people who led that, Cheryl, Sisney, and all the others, especially the art people. Mohita have done such a wonderful work. Niaz, yeah. okay, I didn't get the name in Mononita, and the, where are they? And uh, Ovan, Sristi, Vikas, Amir, and uh, Narendra, Harendra, and all of you wonderful people who made this wonderful thing. Remember, dear parents, you are the chief, you are the chief people today because you have given us such wonderful kids. They created magic on the stage because you have done it at your homes. Give them a big hand, the parents, to the parents, all of you. Thank you, Father, for your wonderful, inspiring address. And thank you, all the parents. Come on, big kiddos. Quiet, quiet. Thank you very much for what you are. Today is a privileged day for us because we celebrate the birthday of Mahatma Gandhi, Gandhi Jayanti, who, who really gave us the answer to what Father uh, Dr. George said. We need to go beyond the apparent. We need to go beyond. And Mahatma Gandhi brought our country on the cusp of history as a nation that overcame the traditional way that in order to win something big, you need to fight. He gave us another way, the way of nonviolence. Fundamentally, he gave us the power to understand and accept that the power of our convictions, ideas, and we accept those ideas as a source of our energy, there is nobody in the world that we cannot defeat. The power of ahimsa is essentially the power of our personal convictions. And that, my dear parents, is what these children need. They have a wonderful, but look at the smiles on their faces. That is their future. We have to promise to our children and not break that promise. That is their future that they deserve. And that future lies within our ability to create in their children the power of convictions. And what are those convictions? Convictions that our country stands for. Diversity, harmony, respect for each other, the power of hard work, the power of seeing the reality. Although we do not see it as, as the, the Abba has got in a beautiful song, I have a dream, that I can see a reality beyond what I see. And that is what, my dear parents, your children deserve. They are such a wonderful girl. I always tell the teacher, Sister Navi, I said, you are so fortunate. Your children are so good. I know all the children are good. We have four schools running. All the children are good, but these children seem to be special to me. I don't know, it's God's blessing. It's your power, my dear parents, but please remember the joy of living the joy of being righteous and truthful at all times is the force within it that can well up to become the power of personal convictions. All great things in the world begin small. And what is that small? It's apparently small, the idea. The idea that I can be compassionate. The idea that I can learn to forgive. The idea that I can respect a person who is diverse from me by the way he or she talks, addresses, eats, or believes. This is the power that we have. The power of a personal conviction. That power Mahatma Gandhi wielded without ever firing a bullet, without ever wielding a sword. And that, my dear parents, is what we have. Look at the joy in their faces. You have to do that. As Father said, if you get married after 10 days, you can know what is hell and heaven. The hell and heaven does not exist for the children. Only heaven exists for them, provided you empower them with the power that the school always has told you, big hearts and brave minds. Resting on the higher ideal of your neighbor as yourself, 
This, my dear parents, is our future. The future of this great country will not rely on divisiveness, will rely on its power to think about it as one family, as one culture, as one people who believe in each other in spite of diversity. And that is what our children need to be taught. And this is what we teach our children every day. And that is why you see them almost, almost insulated from what happens around the world. Happy children coming to school every day and going home every day. And I'm sure each one of those children brings home to you, to you every day at home the joy of being in a school, the joy of believing in the future, the joy of believing that the power of a personal idea, when it is collected with a collective idea, we can become a great people, a great country, a great nation. Thank you, your parents, for their support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for believing all of us that if Mahatma Gandhi brought this country to the center, to the center stage of human history was only because of the power of conviction. Thank you, kiddos, for what you have done. Give them a big hand. And you too, all of you, for the wonderful day you have performed. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for motivating us with your kind words. Now, with a huge round of applause, let us welcome all the participants and appreciate their hard work. On behalf of all fellow Anglites, I deem it a great honor to stand before you and express our heartfelt gratitude for being with us this morning and making us feel proud. We are immensely thankful to our chief guest, Dr. Father Josie P. George, who spared time for us. Thank you, Father, for enlightening us today. We are grateful to Father Robinson for giving us his precious time. We extend our sincere thanks to Father Carvalho for being with us today. Father, we thank you for your support and letting us be ourselves today and every day. We thank all the principals for their valuable presence. A special thanks to the teachers and coordinators present here from other schools of the Father Agil family. We thank our principal, Sister Navya, for her constant support and guidance. Your valuable feedback has made this journey a memorable day for all of us. Thank you for letting us be who we are. With grateful hearts, we would like to thank Ma'am Rashmi, coordinator of the Junior Wing, for grooming us for this day. We acknowledge your contribution and efforts in being a partner, mentor, and a guide to us. 
Thank you, Ma'am Monica, Ma'am Rajna, and Sir Amit, the coordinators of the senior wing, for your extended support. Thank you, Ma'am Cheryl and Ma'am Sisney, for directing the play and preparing us to give our best. We would also thank Ma'am Tanvi and Ma'am Devika for preparing the anchors. You all are requested to come upon stage. We thank our dance teachers, Ma'am Shristi and Sir Harendra, for nurturing and bringing out the best within us. Please join us on the stage. The choir was melodious and vibrant. We thank our music teachers, Sir Ovang, who had constant support from Sir Vikas and Sir Amir for guiding the choir. A special mention for the students of our school, Ordan Dubey, Vivan Gupta and Vihan Shah, who assisted in playing the keyboard. We thank you, Ma'am Monica, Ma'am Nigat, Ma'am Mohita and Ma'am Nabanita for the beautiful decor, props and stage setting. Please join us on the stage. The costumes for the day were were arranged by Ma'am Rashmi and Ma'am Shishti. Thank you for helping us with beautiful costumes. A special thanks to our admin and IT team for managing the event. Thank you, Sir Arun, for your support. Ma'am Ruth for managing the backstage activities, the videographer, and of course, our Didis and Bhaiyas for their contribution. Thank you for your unflinching support. We thank our loving teachers, Sister Andrea, Ma'am Shilpa, Ma'am Diksha, Ma'am Livy, Ma'am Shivani, Ma'am Rekha, Ma'am Ranjana, Ma'am Jennifer, Ma'am Shweta and Ma'am Pooja for being with us at all times and making sure that everything went smoothly. Thank you to all the teachers of the junior and senior wing for their help and support. We thank our parent volunteers, Miss Sapna and Miss Renu for sparing their time. A big thanks to all the parents present here. Your constant support is the source of our success. We sincerely hope that you all had a great time and that you will all return with great memories and experience from this year's annual day celebration. Kindly rise for the school hymn.
is worth a thousand words, but a memory is priceless. Things end, but memories last forever. We hope that today is one such day that would stay with you forever. On this note, we have finally reached to the end of today's program. I Adrika and I Anaya will take your leave as host and look forward to meet you again.